working to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. I'm Alma Angeles. Welcome to ASEAN in Focus on today's headlines. A six-magnitude earthquake hit off the coast of Indonesia late Tuesday, according to the USGS. Some areas in Luzon will continue to experience heavy rains and strong winds, even after severe tropical storm Florida has left the Philippine area of responsibility today. Protesters gathered at its democracy monument to call for the removal of Thai Prime Minister Prayut chan -Ocha. The protests come as the Constitutional Court considers whether to hear a petition to rule when Mr. Prayut's eight-year term expires. And Malaysian ex-premier Najib Razak met with crying supporters just hours before a corruption conviction that carried a 12-year jail sentence was upheld by the country's top court. First in our news, a six-magnitude earthquake hit off the coast of Indonesia late on Tuesday, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. It sent people fleeing their homes. No casualties or damage were immediately reported. The country's Meteorology, Meteorological and Geophysics Agency, or BMKG, classified it as a 6.5 magnitude quake that struck at 2113 local time. Its epicenter is at 80 kilometers or 50 miles south of the town of Mana in Bengkulu province at a depth of 52 kilometers. The tremor was felt for two to six seconds by residents along the southern coastline of Sumatra. It prompted some to run out of of their homes, USGS estimated that there would be little chance of damage on the ground in Sumatra Island. No tsunami threat was issued. But the Indonesian Meteorological and Geophysics Agency advised residents to watch out for possible aftershocks. About 1,344 families have so far been displaced by the severe tropical storm named Florita, according to the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, reporting this today. In its latest situation report, the agency said the figure is equivalent to 4,646 individuals from 60 barangays or villages in the Ilocos, Cagayan Valley, and Cordillera regions. The NDRRMC noted that about 956 families are sheltered in 19 evacuation centers while the rest are staying with relatives and friends. As this developed, the Philippine Army said its reservists in Cagayan Valley have joined the repacking and hauling of relief teams or relief items to be distributed to families affected by Florida at the Regional Social Welfare Office warehouse in Barangay Ugak Sur, Tugigaraw City, Cagayan. Army units in the region have mobilized humanitarian assistance and disaster response teams to help families affected by floods or landslides due to the onslaught of Florita. Meanwhile, some areas in Luzon will still continue to experience heavy rains and strong winds, even after the severe tropical storm named Florita has left the Philippine area of responsibility today, according to Pagasa. Moderate to heavy rains will still be experienced over the Ilocos region, Abra and Benguet, while light to moderate with at times heavy rains will prevail over the rest of the Ilocos and Cordillera regions. Meanwhile, the southwest monsoon is forecast to bring scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over the rest of the zone. Flash floods or landslides are still likely due to moderate to at times heavy rains. The rest of the country will experience isolated rain showers caused by localized thunderstorms. To Thailand now, where protesters gathered at its democracy monument to call for the removal of Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha. The protests come as the Constitutional Court considers whether to hear a petition to rule when Mr. Prayut's eight-year term 
expires. Prayut's adversary say his term started when he took power in the coup in May 2014. But supporters say he has been the premier from 2017 when the current army drafted constitution was implemented or in 2019 when he controversially won much delayed national polls. While the outcome is uncertain, many observers think the court will rule in Prayut's favor. If the court accepts the case, the court could suspend Prayut from office. The former general who has held on to power with a tenacity few anticipated appears unruffled by the latest drama. He said, let the court decide. He told opponents before he appeared outside parliament, brandishing a rock on hand sign at bemused supporters. Uncle Tu, as Prayut is known, has never enjoyed widespread popularity. And Thailand's years long economic battering has only exacerbated a public sense of stagnation. And as mentioned, former General Prayut has clung on to office through major anti-government protests in 2020, a bruising pandemic, a faltering economy and scores of political near misses. But now the very constitution whose design he oversaw is being used against him. Thailand's opposition parties have asked the constitutional court to rule on when Prime Minister Prayut Chanoche's term will end. They cited rules limiting him to a maximum of eight years. And if it accepts the case, the court could suspend Prayut from office. The former general appears unruffled by this latest drama. Again, let's listen in. <laughs> ให้สารรัฐมนูลนะครับพิจารณามินิฉัยการสิ้นสุดลงของนายกรัฐมนตรีนะครับตามรัฐมนตรีมาตรา 170 now, Prayut has rode out months of street protests in Bangkok in 2020 and has survived four no-confidence motions in Parliament. Many believe he is determined to stay on to host the high-profile Apex Summit in Bangkok by November. Now, the Thai court has played a key role at important moments in the upheavals that have convulsed its politics over the last 20 years, cancelling general election results in 2006 and 2014. Meanwhile, an analyst says there is a high likelihood that General Prayut will be led off, but people may see more protests on the streets. Again, let's listen in. He um, is uh, on trial uh, with the Constitutional Court for exceeding the term limit of eight years within the Constitution. Um, this Constitution was written to keep uh, you know, civilian prime ministers from uh, lasting too long, staying too long in office. In fact, ironically, it was designed to prevent people like Thaksin Chinawat, who dominated Thai politics uh, for the last 20 years, from uh, taking office. And, and you know, there's different ways of counting this eight-year limit. Uh, you can count it from the time that uh, he led the military coup in 2014 and became prime minister. Uh, so August 24th is eight years from 2014. Another way to count it is to begin when the constitution was promulgated. The constitution was drafted by a military appointed committee and it was promulgated in April 2017. Uh, that's another way to count to eight years, which means that he has a few more years. And then yet there's a third way. Uh, you can count it from the elections from 2019. Uh, he took office in, in July. So people are saying, his supporters, that, you know, it should come from 2019 or 2017, not 2014. It's uh, safe to say that there's a high likelihood that General Prayut will be let off, he'll be exonerated. The Constitutional Court most likely will find some technicality to let uh, Prayut continue because the court has decided in General Prayut's favor uh, all along. If somehow he is ruled to have exceeded the term and that he would have to um, 
to leave office, that would be a, a um, bombshell. It would be a, an earthquake in Thai politics, and it would uh, lead to a, a lot of uh, instability. Uh, there would have to be an interim prime minister, caretaker, and the election would be sooner. His lack of popularity, lack of legitimacy, means that people would be frustrated if the constitutional court rules in his favor. Uh, so we're seeing, I think, uh, more uh, dissatisfaction, frustration being expressed outside parliament because parliament uh, is uh, control, under the control of the um, proper youth parties. So outside parliament, we'll see more protests, most likely. Meanwhile, Malaysian ex-premier Najib Razak met with crying supporters just hours before a corruption conviction that carried a 12-year jail sentence was upheld by the country's top court, with some Malaysians even welcoming the verdict. Now, we wait, he said, we wait for whatever the decision is. If the decision is bad, I apologize, he said, I have tried my best. And then he said, I will not get a judgment based on the principles of a fair trial. I did not get it. Malaysia's highest court Tuesday upheld the former prime minister's 12-year jail sentence for corruption in the 1MDB financial scandal. A decision analysts said could slam the door to a political comeback. Najib's daughter-in-law, Noor Sharmila Shaheen, said the family was told he was sent to Kaj prison located south of the capital Kuala Lumpur. A lower court in July 2020 found Najib guilty of abuse of power, money laundering and criminal breach of trust over the transfer of 42 million ringgit or 10 million US dollars from SRC International, a former unit of state fund 1MDB to his personal bank account. An appellate court in December denied his appeal prompting him to go to the federal court for a final recourse. Dozens of people are queuing under Monson Drizzle for subsidized cooking oil in Myanmar's commercial hub Yangon. And they're waiting for one of the many commodities that have become scarce as economic misery strikes the city. ตั้งไหนเนาะก็ก็ซื้อน้องนี่จีนน่ะเลยค่ะเจอก็สามารถตั้งไหนเนาะก็แล้วช่วยจ่าเลยอีน้องสุดเตอร์อีน้องสุด
independence from the Soviet Union on August 24, which also falls exactly six months since Russia entered Ukraine on February 24. The envoy said the consequences of the conflict are keenly felt in the Philippines through increases in the prices of fuel, food, fertilizer, and other essential commodities exacerbating poverty during a critical period of pandemic recovery. Russia vowed no mercy for the killers of Daria Dugina, the daughter of an ultra-nationalist intellectual, as hundreds gathered for her funeral, funeral following her death in a car bomb blast over the weekend. First, let's listen it. Now, Moscow said Ukrainian intelligence was behind the attack, a claim dismissed by Kiev. Alexander Dugin, a vocal supporter of the Kremlin's military campaign in Ukraine, who has claimed to be close to President Vladimir Putin, may have been the intended target of the attack that killed his 29-year-old daughter. President Putin posthumously awarded Dugina the Order of Courage. The Order of Courage. The medal was displayed near her coffin on the day of the funeral. Meanwhile, Russia and Ukraine are trading accusations over who is endangering the Zaporizhia nuclear plant as the UN urges both sides to insulate the Ukrainian facility from the ongoing war. Russia called a meeting at the UN Security Council to discuss the dangers that close shelling and a military presence posed to the power plant in southern Ukraine amid fears that a damaged reactor could leak radiation across the region. Take a look. Силы Украины продолжают практически ежедневно обстреливать территорию станции города Энергодар, создавая реальный риск радиационной, радиационной аварии на, западно, на, запад, на Запорожской атомной электростанции с катастрофическими последствиями для всего европейского континента. And on its own territory. Such a catastrophe would lead to numerous deaths and pollution for many years to come. Now, Russian troops have controlled the plant for weeks and allegedly have placed arms and war supplies there. But Moscow denies this. The news continues. Your announcement and focus will be right back. In today's other news, Indonesia's central bank hiked its key interest rate Tuesday for the first time in nearly four years. This is to combat rising inflation stoked by the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Bank Indonesia raised the policy rate to 3.75 from 3.5 percent, a move that went against the majority of analysts' predictions. Its two other main rates were also raised by 25 basis points. Bank Indonesia Governor Perry Wargio said rates were hiked for the first time since 2018 to defend against 
accelerating inflation, with Russia's invasion driving up global energy and food prices and pushing millions into poverty around the world. The move also came as Jakarta considers raising subsidized fuel prices, a policy that was expected to further stoke inflation, already at a seven-year high of 4.94% in July and setting above the central bank's target range of between 2 and 4%. With rising energy and food commodity prices, where Gio said the central bank expected inflation would go above its target range in 2022 and 2023. President Bongbong Marcos Jr. met with his economic team and officials of the National Food Authority to discuss steps to ensure the adequate supply of rice in the country. The Office of the President said on its official Facebook page, President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. meets with his economic team and the National Food Authority officials to plan the administration's steps on maintaining sufficient rice buffer stock in the country. Marcus said his administration has increased the provision for buffer stock capacity from 9 days to 15 days under the proposed 5.268 trillion peso national budget for next year. He also said in his budget message there's also an allocation of 670 billion pesos for the purchase of high quality rice and corn seeds for seed buffer stocking under the DA. He also said this will ensure that there is enough supply of these seeds to be used during calamities and emergencies affecting rice and corn productions. In his first month as president and agriculture chief, Marcus gave a marching order to boost production of rice, corn, vegetables, pork and poultry. He also called for the review of the rice tarification law and how it affected local farmers. Samahang Industria ng Agricultura or SINAG lauded President Marcos's move to lower the price of sugar to 70 pesos per kilo. SINAG President Rosendo Sosa said the price of sugar may even be may even be lower than 70 pesos next month. Let's listen in. Magandang achievement ang ating na presidente kinausap ang mga uh, supermarket na ibaba yung presyo. Uh, of course, uh, we are expecting na, na yung next month baka mas mababa pa. No? Kasi uh, nakikita naman natin yung, uh, yung mga local uh, miller, ang bigay lang is 45 pesos. Eh, no? And uh, yung import price nakita rin natin na uh, nasa 43 pesos yung landed plus uh, bat na yun plus uh, 5% uh, tariff so uh, uh, inexpect natin na uh, by next month uh, bababa pa dun sa 70 pesos In other news, Philippine Navy Flag Officer in Charge, Vice Admiral Adelius Bordado has cited the need for strengthened cooperation between the navies of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN to be able to defeat emerging maritime challenges in the region. Bordado made this remark during the viewpoint exchange of the 16th ASEAN Navy Chiefs meeting held in Bali, Indonesia on Tuesday. Bordado said ASEAN navies must work together to address several transboundary maritime security challenges that no single country can face alone. This year's ANCM hosted by the Indonesian Navy carries the theme, the roles of ASEAN navies in addressing maritime challenges. And that is the latest news here on ASEAN in Focus. I'm Alma Angeles. Stay in the news because we live in extraordinary times. Good night.